Welcome back to the Perfected Health Podcast. This is episode 11. I am back with Victor Cosetto, and today we are going to talk about candida, which I've done several videos on, but we've never gone in depth, especially with what I've learned over the past several years. Victor, what's going on today? Hey, how's it going, Frank? Glad to be back. Looking forward to talking about this candida stuff. Um, yeah, in fact, we've been planning to do this for quite a while. And we just haven't been able to hook up. It's been a busy time. Yeah, we want to do ideally like podcasts every two, three weeks on this stuff just to kind of bang out all these health topics. And this is a huge yeah. one. I think I get comments every single day on one of my videos about candida or SIBO now. And especially mm -hmm. with the high radiation environments people are in that's really inhibiting organ function it really makes it easy for bacteria, especially fungus to proliferate in the gut and really just wreak havoc. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think, um, I'm not even sure like all your listeners, like you say, you get a lot of comments, but a lot of people really aren't aware that candida is probably the, if we want to say the root cause, you know, but the cause of a lot of their symptoms and they just don't realize it because their doctors don't know. You know, they don't, they don't know what's going on, but so many people suffer from candida overgrowth. Specifically, I would, I should point out candida albicans, because there's many different kinds of candida, you know, and they're not really all bad guys. Even, even the bad guy, the candida albicans um, is still useful if it's kept in check. So uh, can, candida overgrowth, I think is really the right context for people to keep in mind. Because a lot of people just like want to kill, kill, kill. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. Because right. when people like kill they say, oh, yeah. I have candida. And then you're like, oh, wait, no, hold on a second. Everyone has candida. Everyone, yeah, has, right. everyone has salmonella. Everyone has E. coli. Everyone has staph. Everyone right. has all these different types of bacteria and fungus in their stomach. And if they're in the correct ratio and you're on a healthy diet in a healthy environment, right. you know, everything's happy together. But some tend to proliferate in, in the context of poor diets or, or poor living circumstances. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So I guess you like the, um, and so many people do suffer because in the modern or standard American diet, there's so many refined sugars and refined carbs. And that tends to be a really, maybe one of the most popular or most common factors for why candida gets out of control. You know, just too, too many refined sugars, too many refined carbs. And so sometimes it's really easy for people to get it back in balance just by changes in diet. And if their biome hasn't been wrecked, you know, if they're not in total dysbiosis, the body can readjust and it'll be okay. You know, so, so a lot of times, it, I, I don't know if I could say for most people, but for many people, just good dietary guidance can get rid of candida, right? Can, or can get it back in check, we should say, right? To, to restore balance. Yeah. Thankfully, most people uh, aren't in like a, a super, super severe state of got damage where it's going to take them, you know, six, seven months to years to fix their health. And if you do right. go to a regular doctor or physician, you might actually end up in that scenario because you'll go to doctor after doctor after doctor over six, seven, eight, nine, 10 months a year. And mm -hmm. they look at you like you're crazy because candida isn't really viewed as an illness in, in the medical literature. You, know, you go to gastroenterologists, they're just going to give you right. proton pump inhibitors, which will lower your uh, gastrointestinal right. capability, which will just make things worse. So if right. you keep going to those doctors over that period of a year and, and you keep consuming toxins or whatever, that's just fueling the candida and making it worse. You can end up in a, in a really sick state that where then you mm -hmm. have to dig yourself out of the hole because you couldn't come across the right information to fix your problem. Right. Right. And don't forget that antibiotics make things worse too. And so yeah, many people yeah. are always getting pumped that with the antibiotics the doctors that are a little bit better uh, will prescribe antibiotics, obviously not the best ones. Um, and the antibiotics for some people, it's a temporary, most people, it's a temporary fix. You know, it'll bomb out the candida, but then two, three, four months later, it's even worse than before. Um, the, the excellent, right. excellent mm -hmm. doctors, um, they, they will prescribe specific antibiotics and things for SIBO that will bomb it out. And then they'll prescribe probiotics that might work, but at the end of the day, you don't want to bomb everything out completely over that long of a period of time because that's gonna that's gonna damage right, you more than anything. Right. Yeah, I'm 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 a big I'm I'm really against using the antibiotics for any of that stuff because I just for me, like you said, you know, it's like a short term, it comes back with a vengeance, right? So if someone's got a really serious case of candida, 
Um, and it's not just dysbiosis, it's, it's most likely rooted in heavy metal toxicity. And that makes it, and so if our body is loaded with heavy metals, not only are we more sensitive to EMFs, right? So we, we get this negative feedback loop going on. And because the, the candida literally grabs the heavy metal ions and builds it, builds those into its biofilm. And so even if we do biofilm busting and, and stuff like that and temporarily get rid of the candida, but your body is still toxic, the candida is just going to grow back and it's going to build those very strong biofilms. Yeah. From the physiological perspective, people need to understand that candida is a good thing. You know, it, it's, it's trying to get rid of the toxins yes. in your body. So if you take antibiotics right. and you kill the candida, it's just going to die there, leave more toxins because it's, it's now dead fungal tissue as well as the toxins that it picked up. And I actually did a mm -hmm. video in depth on all of the different antibiotics and pharmaceuticals that doctors do prescribe for SIBO and candida, if you guys want to check that out, but this is going to be focused more on like what candida is, why it happens, how do you, how do you fix it? And then later on, we'll go into more severe circumstances and, and, and long-term solutions. Right. But yeah, let's emphasize more on candida being like a healing fungus. Like for me, yeah, when, yeah. for me, when my liver okay. was really overloaded with iron, mm -hmm. The reason I got candida was because I started drinking milk and the lactose in the milk, the sugars were feeding candida and the candida was growing and trying to suck all of the iron out of my liver. And then the candida is expelled mm. in the bowel movement. You know, it's not like the candida is just staying there permanently in your digestive tract and doesn't want right. to leave. It's being expelled with regular bowel movement. So it's trying to detox your body in an extreme circumstance. Right, right. Yeah. So I think that's a really good thing to emphasize that it's not evil, right? It's actually, there's actually a good purpose. There's a, there's a, a positive reason why it's happening. It's actually like we could say, it's trying to help you by getting rid of heavy metal toxins, by even consuming the excess refined sugars and carbs, right? So, it, and then it just gets out of control. Like we, we can relate it to like other bodily functions, like a fever, Right. If we get really sick, the body, the, the fever is a defense mechanism. The fever goes up to kill off whatever the issue is. And yeah, sometimes if that gets out of control, it's an issue. But basically, it's one of our defense mechanisms. So it's not this uh, it's not inherently evil. So we, we just got to get it back in check. And we have to we got to figure out what the candida is trying to tell us. Mm -hmm. Right. Like so may, maybe it's a dietary adjustment we need to make. Maybe it's heavy metals we need to get out of the body. Could be stress, right? It's, and of course, you know, all these crazy processed foods that are, you know, right? There's a lot of hidden toxins, a lot of hidden sugars that people don't realize. Um, I, I think I mean, one, you, one right? of the bigger myths to, to also talk about, and one of the first things people mention in the context of candida is the, the sugar and carbs feed candida. And, and technically speaking, that's a good thing because the candida is going to grow more and pull more toxins out, but that that's mm -hmm. also not tolerable by your body. If, if you're just consuming right. sugars and carbs and your stomach is just one giant fungus, you're going to feel horrible. You're not going to be able to sleep. You're going to feel like you're dying. So, so you want right. to find a middle ground of consuming, you know, a balance of nutritious foods like animal proteins and fats to give your body what it needs to detox. And then the carbs, the fiber, the sugars, that type of stuff is mm. going to help the candida grow and soak up the toxins. But then you also need probiotics to keep the candida in check. So it's a matter of, right. of finding a fine line and a balance. And I think all of the conventional wisdom out there on candida is, is really incorrect. Um, but yeah, let's go right. into, I guess, the first step of, you know, how do we remove these heavy metals and, and what type of diet mm. are we supposed to follow? Right. So if we, um, if we start with the most extreme example with the heavy metals, uh, then I, I always like with my clients, clients, for example, that have tried to use various like biofilm busters, you know, maybe antibiotics, a lot of different plant medicine, uh, the idea of attacking, but they, they can't get rid of the candida. And so I'll use the PBX uh, or PB zeolites, bentonite clay, even folic acid. And I'll use specific brands and in combination with kefir 
MSM, magnesium, which we talked about. And the reason why I have the uh, magnesium and MSM up here is because they enable us to detox much better, right? So like ma magnesium is one of the limiting factors in our detox ability. We'll burn up a lot of magnesium when we're detoxing. So, and the same thing, MSM, which provides uh, sulfur and helps with methylation, it's going to improve our detox abilities, especially at a cellular level. So yeah, the combination actually, if you can do all of those things for really, really talking about someone that's toxic, right? If that's the root cause of their candida overgrowth, overgrowth using especially the PBX zeolite uh, with kefir, it's going to break. It's not only going to break down the biofilms, but the candida won't, it won't have a reason to build the biofilms anymore mm -hmm. because the heavy metals will be gone. It's not immediate. It's not an instant. So this is, this is something that takes more time, right? Cause you're really pulling out the root cause, trying to get those heavy metals out and look, they could have been building up for decades in people, you know? So, and sometimes it takes a long time. It's hard to predict. But you can see it if you're if you're getting tested, you'll see your heavy metal toxicity is going down. So you have the zeolite, the clays to help kind of bind to and pull the toxins out of the body. So they're not being reabsorbed too much in the digestive tract. Right. And then you have the MSM right. and magnesium, which are two, two cell components that people are usually heavily deficient in that helps beat yes. up and, and fuel the, the detox processes. So where right. does regular like cow and clay or just regular soil clay fit in there as well as charcoal. Yeah, you could use those too. So for example, for it's interesting when we talk about clay, because I will often use a combination of three different clays because every clay, like from, you know, and it's like endless all over the world, it's a little different and different clays will have different uh, affinities, meaning they'll be more strongly attracted to one toxin or another. So they work together and it's the same thing with the zeolites and the clays combined. And you can even throw a fulvic acid in there. They'll all have slightly different affinities. So it's just giving your body even more support. When we talk about the, like if we go away from the bentonite, the illites or the kaolinites and such, it'll, they're not as strong at pulling stuff out. So it's more delicate. So some people, maybe they can't handle it. They get a stronger detox reaction. They just have to go more slowly. And for example, also at a bentonite, we have calcium bentonite clays and sodium bentonite clays. And the sodium bentonite clays are swelling clay. Some people can handle it really well. It's good, but it, maybe they need something more delicate so they can use a calcium bentonite clay, which still is very, got a very strong pull, but it's not a swelling clay. So it's a little bit easier in the digestive yeah, uh, just, track. just to interject, I mean, this is kind of confusing to some people. I, I think I spoke mm -hmm. about clay a couple of years ago in one of my water videos. Um, th there's a couple main groups like kaolinite clay. So when I talk about kaolin clay, that's predominantly like African clays. There's it's a mild, it's a very delicate, mild. Yeah, yeah. they actually use it a lot of times in like facial masks and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, there's montmorillonite smectite. And bentonite is a derivative. That's of a that. smectite. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's all the, the same. Yeah, that's that's what um the the like the volcanic stuff is classified in, and those are very popular in uh, Europe. And then there is uh, illite right. clay, and I don't remember where the illite clay is from, but um, they're all over the place. And then for each of those three main categories of clay, you have subcategories and, and things that fit in here and there, depending on the the location right. and region. Right. Yeah. It's really, really complex and it's very confusing because then there's different, you'll hear different marketing terms like a, a, a green desert clay or a red desert clay, but yeah. they're, they're bentonite yeah. clays. Right. And so, and it's because they come, they're still the same process, right? They're basically from a volcanic source, but different places around the world and exactly how they were formed was a little bit different but their structures are very similar. And then it's the, the, the big difference for us is how gentle it is or how strong it is or how it matches to our body. Yeah. Whenever clay is brought up, I think of geophagia, which is like the term for when these people would make like clay patties and eat them for minerals and for when they were sick in certain like cultures and tribes and groups of people. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Historically. I mean, clay has an amazing history I and mean, there's so much information we we could just like talk endlessly for hours. I mean, there's books out there on it and there's so many different ones. Like people can debate 
you know, what, which clay is better than another. And you can't yeah, have and, a winner. And, and to, to simplify it even further, you're basically putting dirt in your water. And that, that might yeah. sound kind of weird to people, but when you drink it, it actually tastes like, it's almost like you crave it. If you have like the right type of clay, or if it's like, a, um, has certain mineral content or you're deficient in certain things. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And they're right. And they'll all be unique. You'll even see animals that will have their favorite places to go for clay. Mm -hmm. animals that have access to different plate, like elephants, birds, they will seek out clay and they'll have, they'll also have their favorite sources because, you know, unlike us, right. They're much more in tune with what the body They have needs, better right? senses, their sense of smell yes. and taste. They can, especially yes. uh, cows in the field, when farmers give them mineral supplements, the cows can actually uh, smell which mineral they crave and need, and they'll go towards it. Uh, right. Part of our poor development and, and recent dietary history has like, given us a worse sense of smell and put us out of touch with what our, our body craves. I mean, people still have cravings like for chocolate and pickles and ice cream and stuff, but it's not nearly as in tune as what animals are capable of, of sniffing out. Right. Right. And they, they don't tend to have dysbiosis, right? So they're right. So their um, senses aren't really being distorted like ours are. So yeah, it's really crazy. Like I, I try to work with the clients to try to get them back in touch with their intuition and their senses but that's difficult, right? Because like you're saying, you know, we're just kind of, we're desensitized. And then we're also driven by fear. We, we live in a world of psychological mm. warfare, yeah, no, right? Of being seduced by things. So it, it is really complicated. So even for me, when I, I can recommend a type of clay for a client, but I tell them, you yeah, try to listen to your body. You might want to switch over and use something different. Don't just automatically follow what I recommend, right? We, we so, all, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we kind of jumped the gun a little bit. Um, you know, we, so you have candida, we know what clays and mm. supplements you can take that are high priority. I mean, obviously you can basically take every vitamin and mineral supplement in the book uh, from B vitamins to iodine to, and it'll probably help you in some capacity if you're deficient, which most people are, mm -hmm. but in most cases, just by cleaning up the diet, and consuming a good probiotic, you don't have to worry about too much of this stuff. Right. That, that's true. I mean, so the, like the GAPS diet is a good example of that where but it takes like two years, you know, for, for people that, that's like prescribed to people f with autism yeah. to eventually pull the aluminum out of the brain. And it's just really about cleaning up the diet, you know, taking out stuff and then slowly reintroducing as you figure out where clean sources of food, et cetera. So, because we are, if we have clean foods, you know, and clean air and clean water, we're like indestructible. We'll, we'll overcome mm -hmm. anything we'll recover. And so when we talk about, you know, the things we're talking about now, like the clay, the zeolites, et cetera, it's, it's because we've fallen before, below a certain threshold and we just don't have access to the food. You know, mm -hmm. or, you know, not, not everyone can, but yeah, if they can do it. And yeah. now, now these, these tools that are available do make it easier for us. though. they do make it quicker mm -hmm. yeah, if we can afford them. Right. So if, yeah. if people have a budget for it. Yeah. For, for, and for the dietary context, the, the quick switch is go organic everything and see how, yes. how much better you feel. But for, for people that have like a strong willpower and they're able to stick to only a few foods, I usually suggest people like the safest protein source is just really lean grass fed beef. You know, you don't have to worry about what they're feeding the chickens or the, or the pork or whatever, the eggs, you don't have to worry about what they're giving the dairy cattle. Just really lean grass fed beef is a, is an excellent, safe protein source. You don't have the extra fat stressing your digestion and liver. And then you want some clean carbohydrate sources, which with a decent amount of fiber, like, uh, just organic white rice or even organic pasta for mm -hmm. some people for fiber, you can have like organic mm -hmm. beans, cannellini beans, organic artichokes, organic cauliflower. And then maybe some, if you want something sweet, like some, some fruit here or there. And then for fats, um, coconut is very strong antimicrobial. Um, so, right. so just that small base of foods like lean grass fed beef, organic white rice, organic cannellini beans, mm -hmm. organic apples and coconut. So if you want to only stick to five or six foods and be mm -hmm. super strict with your diet for a week or two, and then start introducing stuff, I think that's a great balance of fats, carbs, and uh, mm. protein. Uh, but speaking of uh, coconut, I mean, we definitely have to kind of debunk these antimicrobial protocols, which are probably 
doing more harm than good. You know, they probably flush out the candida in the first day or two, and then they're not reintroducing probiotics. It's just, it has to be so much added stress on the liver, right. just processing the, the antimicrobials, which are essentially toxins. Right. Right. It's put, it's putting a heavy burden. So I like, I don't use those things. I, I actually, I love plant medicine. Right. And, and I respect it, but I don't really use it with my clients because I don't like, cause you get stuck in a cycle. You're killing it. It comes back. You're killing it. It comes back. So I stay away from like, Caprylic acid is often used in combination with like, you, you did, yeah, I mean, I, I, I followed those protocols for months when I had candida to try to fix it. Undiselenic acid, berberine, right. oregano oil, right. thyme oil, clove, wormwood. Right. If right. you can name it as an antimicrobial, I've probably tried it. Grapefruit seed, black seed oil. Right. There's, there's two, three different. Right, right. And then they have the broad spectrum supplements. You can buy a candida cleanse. You don't have to buy each of these individually. You could buy um, MCT oil right. with the capriac, all the different types of acid. In right. It. Right. And, and right. Look, look, if you have a severe candida overgrowth, you might have to do one or two days of a protocol just to clear it out. And then you can incorporate the probiotic. But the only thing that ever fixed it for me was just the probiotic itself. Water kefir, a high quality probiotic. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it's the same thing for me. So like I, I saw clients that same thing, they did like everything you did. And then I was like, look, kefir and the PBX, you're going to get rid of the candida. And, you know, and these are people that had tons of experience. And then sure enough, finally, boof. And the key is that, right, when you're using the detox components, you, now it's gone for good. I mean, of, of course, you go back to a bad lifestyle, you, you know, you're gonna, it's going to come back. But I mean, you really get rid of the root source when you start taking out those heavy metals. And when you go to something like kefir, I mean, you know, it's just such a powerful probiotic. And again, and that's something you're incorporating into your lifestyle. So it's not like, okay, I got to buy this drug or supplement to temporarily blow this up. And then your lifestyle doesn't change and it's just going to come back. So, yeah, I mean, that's having kefir, I think, as the basis for the solution, regardless of what the root cause is, if it is just the you know, the, the poor processed foods, kefir is going to be displacing some of those. Have you seen foods. that? Um, there's like a right. TikTok sound. It's like, if, if you're not doing this, where the fuck you at? Like, like if you're oh, not, no, if, if, no, like anywhere. if you're not, like, I was going to say, if you're not drinking kefir, where the fuck you at? No, that's just being, being silly. Like, uh, but the, the interesting comparison between kefir and antimicrobials is, so you take an antimicrobial, it bombs out the candida. And then the antimicrobial passes through and then the candida can grow back. But that antimicrobial is also very stressful and damaging to your liver and organs. If you drink the right. kefir, the lactobacillus and the bacteria in the kefir actually eat the candida, then they stay there. And the most important thing is the kefir is not stressful on your liver. It's actually helpful for your body. Right. And you can, you need something that's sustainable that you can do consistently. Like when I was taking, I probably did more damage to my liver taking oregano oil than, than mm. I did just letting the your candida kidneys overgrow. Too. Very yeah, you're hurting yeah, your yeah. kidneys. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. Um, yeah. Like you could see, I, I got so many stories from people that again, they've gone through the same experiences that you did. And then you get going with kefir and sometimes kefir alone is enough, you know, because of course you always want to be fine tuning other things in your diet. Broth is actually very good. Again, if it's really quality, you know, you're making your own good food at home. It's so good because it is, again, per, it's providing you with magnesium and so many other nutrients. Minerals and B vitamins. Yeah. Yeah, very important. exactly. Exactly. So the, the double fermented kefir is amazing because of the B vitamins too, which are important for detox. And if you, so, if you ferment it too much like me, you get to get drunk too. It's a, I guess, maybe a positive side effect for some people. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, I don't oh, drink. You know what? But, you I'm, know. Glad, I'm glad I brought that up because um, the reason a lot of people get candida is actually alcohol. Um, yeah. Right. A lot, I, I've heard a lot of, a lot sugar. of, yeah, yeah, a lot of young women who go out drinking all night and then have pizza and eat shit. And then they, they come home and, and then uh, like a couple months, a year or two of doing that, they have candida. A lot, right. a lot of alcohol related yeah. candida issues too. Right. Inhibits the yeah, liver I'm, function. You can't digest the food. The fungus overgrows. Right. 
Right. Yeah, it's really bad stuff. You know, there, there's one thing, there is one other thing we didn't touch upon. I was almost going to touch upon it before, because when you were talking about the fats, I actually like a high fat diet for a client. It, it depends because everybody's so different. You know, I mean, we know, you know, it should be somewhere between 30 and 80 percent, you know, of your calories can be fat, according to what we know historically. Um, and, but there's a there's a key thing here. So if you if a person is having a hard time with fats, so by, by getting them into a high fat, fat diet, if they can't digest it, maybe they can use ox bile to help give them a kick start, uh, a head start. And there's a very interesting thing because ox bile or just bile flow in general can help. Bile is really good for helping to break down also the biofilms. Mm -hmm. And it's good for just lubricating your system, right? So like a lot of people, their, their digestive system isn't working right because they've been on their too low fat diet. You know, they've been on a low fat, a low fat diet for too long. Right. So that's something for us to be aware of. And then of course, there is also, like you were saying earlier, some people can't handle the fat. They need to give the digestive system a rest, you know, the liver a rest, et cetera. But it's something else to look at. So again, just speaking to the individuality of people, and how some people may be going consuming more healthy fats, of course, not not canola oil and all that stuff. Yeah. Because you would again, you would be eating the healthy meats, right? You would just be enjoying the healthy meats. Yeah. Let's give a let's give a percentage. So I would say really, really stressful liver damage, low fat, maybe anywhere from 15 to 30 percent of the diet should be fat. I think like the 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 fat from the the fresh beef as well as like coconut or MCT are probably the easiest on the liver. Mm -hmm. And then in other scenarios, as you said, you can increase the amount of fat as it's not, as long as it's not coming from vegetable seed oils. Right, right, yeah. And I'm and like I said, I'm not I'm not afraid of ox bile um, because there are so many benefits to that. Because there's other things too. It helps with vitamin D. Um, there's a lot of interesting things about ox bile. It's, I don't normally recommend it. So yeah, well, you, you have to, enzymes. I'm not encouraging the, people. You have enzymes on your uh, your board there in the back. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I right, kind of lump right. I kind of lump ox bile in with enzymes in the sense that it's it's a digestive protein that sometimes yeah. when our our liver is inhibited, our bodies mm -hmm. aren't working properly. Just taking stuff temporarily. And then that's really the goal with anything. Right. When you're trying to right. fix a health issue, there might be some things you have to do temporarily, like take ox bile, take a, an right. enzyme blend. Like I have the macronutrient enzyme blend on organ supplements. I think I sent you one too, to try out, but yes. you don't, again, yes. you don't want to take yeah. that stuff for, you right. know, for two, three, four months. You want it just a few weeks. Hopefully that just should be help, enough. Yeah. And then, and then everything should be fixed because right. there's not, nothing's better and less stressful on your body than real food. And then you're getting it. Like if you've got kefir, you're getting a ton of enzymes from your kefir too. I can't speak I mean, real food. We, we did a podcast on kefir or kefir, or however you want to say it. And right. out, out of anything we speak about today, I think it needs to be like highlighted that kefir here is the takeaway. If you're not that, that should mm. be, that should be in huge, gigantic text on your back. And you can right. rare, barely see the other words. Kefir Mm -hmm. You got to drink it, make it properly. Um, I have several videos on how to make dairy kefir, water kefir. You can buy water mm -hmm. kefir grains on my site. I think, I mean, one thing we never spoke about was like, what about, can you actually just eat the kefir grains? Is that going to be nearly yes. as, if, that's probably going to be just as effective as it's, drinking kefir, yeah, although a lot more expensive. It's not, it's not equal, but so I, I, I talk about that too in my videos. Like you take your extra grains, right? With people that get the grains and are making their own. And just take the extra grains and put them into your, you know, your shake that you're blending up, you know, for your second ferment, because the, the distribution of the microbes is very different inside the grains. And so wait, because some of them proliferate much more into the milk. So when you take the grains, the ones that are maybe a lot less in the drink itself, you're going to get a, a shot extra boost by eating some of the grains. So it's nice it's nice to just consume. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Ones. They're selling these $30 bottles of probiotics when they should just be selling $30 bottles of kefir grains. Yeah. And it's much more potent. Well, I tell you what, so I have a client that cannot really tolerate milk yet, but continues to grow the milk kefir grains and just consume some of the grains Yeah, and can tolerate that. And it's, so it's a huge boost. Um, you can't exactly replace 
the drink itself with the grains, but yeah, both together or one, if you can't do the other. Yeah. There's, there's too many, this, you have the surface area of all the bacteria and just an incredible amount of B vitamins that are yes one of the most yes, important yeah. things for just what people, and especially what people are deficient in and not absorbing properly. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That, that's uh, a really big thing. I think it's even a big thing in, um, well, I don't want to bring up the, the topic of things we should not speak about with certain current diseases and such. Oh yeah. You know, there, why. <laughs> a, yeah, but a lot, there is, a, there were some really good write-ups. Uh, a lot of some scientists and doctors believed it was actually because of vitamin B deficiencies. And, uh, uh there's another disease called beriberi, which is, um, it's because of vitamin B deficiency. So again, right. If you've got kefir and especially if you got double fermented, you know, that's a, a good amount of B vitamins coming into your body. Healthy, we've, spoken, uh, we've spoken about like the less, like this is a hypothetical, less severe candida infection. Maybe you just need to fix your diet. Definitely incorporate mm. a little bit of probiotics, the key for that. That's something anyone should do. You should be good to go in a more severe circumstance. Then you start incorporating the zeolite, the clays, the magnesium, the MSM. Right. But right. in a, let's say you are that person that's been going to the doctor for two years and candida has turned into SIBO, SIFO, a uh, small intestinal fungal mm -hmm. overgrowth. Let's say the candida is really severe. You can't sleep. Your body's not digesting food. You're losing weight. Um, that's, that's where you might actually have to take an antimicrobial protocol, have to then supplement actual physical vitamins and minerals to, to replenish your body mm -hmm. and just bomb out that candida. So your body can actually digest the food and absorb the nutrients. Um, that's definitely more severe circumstance that you would definitely want to, uh, consult with someone on. Um, I've had a lot of people come to me from naturopaths that aren't really too sure what they're doing. Um, it never made sense to me as, you know, you know I've, I've seen a couple dozen protocols that these naturopaths are doing and not one of them has recommended kefir, which to me is mind boggling. Um, right. Right. But, it's pretty but, crazy. Yeah. 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 When, when you do that's get right. into that, um, that severe, severe SIBO, SIFO state, um, that, that's where you kind of want to utilize all information you have access to and understand that the priority is get your body to digest the food you're eating. If that means taking antimicrobials and enzymes, and then um, you start gaining weight again, you feel like the food's digesting, mm. but whatever you do, if it's not working within several days, you got to alter things. You got, you can't stick to one thing and hope it's going to work. Right. Yeah. You got to get away from it. So yeah, that's for, for me. I never use those things because I usually am trying to get them right to the long term. But like you said, you'll know after a few days, it doesn't work. And SIBO is really about motility. And I have a lot of clients that they got rid of SIBO using the PB zeolite, which is, um, it's just a bit large. It's larger than the PBX. So it doesn't go into the blood. It's like as small as it can be without going right into the blood. So it gets as deep as possible into the digestive tract. And some people responded really quickly with PB to get rid of SIBO. Yeah. You, the body has a tendency to want to absorb nutrients when it's not necessarily a good thing. The body wants to absorb toxins. So when you have the candida or whatever in your digestive system and the body wants to like digest and absorb what's in the stomach, the reason you consume the clay, the zeolite and stuff is actually to flush it out because you need to flush it mm -hmm. out. You don't want it sitting there. Yeah, exactly. And drink lots of water um, without diluting everything in your system. That's a little bit tricky for people too. Sometimes people go overboard with water, but most people don't drink enough when they're detoxing, right? When you need to detox, you need to flush out. Um, and I think one other thing I was good, I think is good to mention, people don't realize that kefir is also one of the best electrolytes. Cause like people tend to go crazy. Cause if you go overboard with electrolytes, you're going to tax your kidneys. Yeah. So people should really, I mean, basically if they're eating healthy, if they're following a good diet, then they have, then they're good on the electrolytes. Right. So just, uh, yeah, man, a balanced diet is just so good. And you, know, you bring in the good foods. That means you're going to displace the refined sugars, the refined carbs and all the other toxic processed foods. And those good foods are going to nourish you and help you to get rid of the candida. And then, yeah, you know, I mean, there's, there's so many, it's just endless. Actually the enzymes you have to sell. I mean, those are also pretty good for helping someone try to bust through 
you know, to try to bust through a biofilm in a lot of those easier cases. Yeah. Yeah. If, if it's not a real severe overgrowth, right. The, the enzymes, severe. the, especially this, the, like the proteases will just, it'll eat through all the proteins and stuff and, and kind of digest, uh, digest the candida and break it down. So your right. body actually absorbs the nutrients instead of it just sitting right. there. And, you know, one interesting thing is that, you know, candida it, it has only really came up since our new Wi-Fi high radiation environments. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think candida really existed, uh, like in, in this context, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago. But once, once we have all these cell phones, everyone's on Wi-Fi all day, um, all of that, you know, electromagnetic radiation is mm -hmm. passing through our digestive system and inhibiting organ function. The, the main thing to take away from that is bacteria and fungus are relatively unaffected by radiation compared to living things. Well, they're, they're well, both living, but like yeah. actual people and, and larger beings with more. Well, there's a lot, of, there's some studies that say that their DNA is altered possibly more, which really is why the, it's hurting the us. bacteria and fungus. Yes. So, which is, which is what hurts us too. So you're, we're actually getting a double whammy. Um, yeah. And so a lot, of, there's still a lot of that research going on, but so I've seen stuff that says that, yes. Yeah, so not obviously like you're saying, right. We're vulnerable. Our organs are vulnerable, but also our biome. So with the biome being altered by the EMFs, again, that makes it easier for the candida overgrowth to take place because all of the, right. Cause we, we should have enormous diversity. The bacteria in, are, you're saying the bacteria are more sensitive to the EMF than the fungus are. There, uh, I, I don't know if it is more or less. I, I, I'm not sure about that, but just in general, the microbes, their the DNA is being impacted by the EMFs, mm -hmm. and so and so that would disrupt their natural because because right, they exchange DNA. I mean, so they right they they evolve very quickly and they adapt. And so, so the food you're eating, that's why candy. That's why even if you have a really bad candida overgrowth, yeah, it's fueled by uh, sugar and carbs, but it, it can switch to eating fat and protein too. And if the, and if the candida morphology switches to fat and protein, then you're, you're, you're in trouble. If it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are, well, the morphology issues are really pretty scary thing, but I don't want to terrify people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we want to, yeah, we want, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we want th yeah. those are, there are very rare circumstances where yeah. if you have a large amount of toxins in the body, then regardless of what you do, the candida will continue to change and adapt. But again, the key for, and the healthy diet is what mainly alleviates that. But right. the, the EMF right. Wi-Fi stuff is why I, I, I'm in a canopy right now. This is a silver canopy. I, I wear the, my shirt and underwear all the time. When I go out, uh, I sent Victor a canopy. Mm. Um, Can't see mine here, but I got to yeah, do that. Yeah. I got to get mine on the screen. <laughs> uh, yeah, but thanks yeah, for that. It, it's important. And I think, you know, out of everything we've spoken about, this is something everyone should be doing as well. You want to reduce the Wi-Fi radiation stress as much as possible. And just by wearing protective clothing and sleeping in a bed canopy, two things which are not really invasive to the average person's lifestyle, mm. you can effectively reduce EMF exposure by like 60, 70%. And then when you do additional things like keep your cell phone on airplane mode, hardwire devices, reduce household EMF, that's where you get upwards of 80, 90%. But I've, I've had clients come right. to me where um, their brother installed a computer room next to them and they just started having all these health issues. And regardless of what they did with the diet or anything, exercise, nothing helped it because the radiation yeah. was that high and they couldn't tolerate it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, some people are really sensitive, you know, like here's another thing too. So the more toxins, again, these, the more sensitive. Yeah. So like these tools help those people so much. I mean, they help all of us because you know, you're just more sensitive to EMF when you've got more heavy metals. If you get the heavy metals out, your sensitivity will go down a bit. Doesn't mean that you still can just bathe in EMF all the time because it's just such an unnatural state for us. It's just really unnatural. And yeah, for sure. For some people, it's all about the EMF. I mean, yeah, um, different people tolerate it differently, yeah. but especially in the past few years, now that the devices are are becoming stronger and more. Um, there's just so yes. many more of them and everyone's, everyone has a Netflix device on their TV and Alexa, yes. a cell phone. And now more and more, it, it went probably from like 5% of people being EMF sensitive to now like 15, 20, 20, 30% of the population is noticing. And 
Um, I saw a post yesterday of like a woman's husband bought the new five gram cell phone and she started feeling pains in her copper IUD. The wow. you know, just stuff, stuff, little things like that. Yeah. And people, people can't figure out right. what, what is it? What, what, and then the, the person that knows what's going on, Hey, it's, there's metal in your body. There's all yeah. these frequencies around us. It's, it's, it's like a yeah. magnet. It's, it's sucking in all that frequencies and dispersing right. it around the area of the metal. And yeah, that, crazy. as you said, the more talk, if you, if your liver is full of iron, a lot of toxins, a lot of heavy metals, it's, it's just absorbing more radiation, which is why, you know, if you just wear a protective shirt, your organs are protected. It's, it's a good way to, to ensure that digestion isn't being impacted too much regardless of where you go. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's a really easy win to reduction, you know, just shield yourself the best you can, you know, reduce what you can, then try to get the toxins out. Um, yeah, so we, we're not helpless, right? There's so much we can do. We can also become aware, you know, where we position ourselves. Like I, I have one, I have a, uh, one of the trimeters that I use to check a house where I'm, so I can figure out like, where's the worst place or the best place to hang out. So there's uh, not everybody needs to, I mean, a lot of things are just visible. You know, you can, you can see where's the, don't, don't hang out next to your, your power panel. You know, don't be leaning against that. Yeah, no, I mean, if you, if you, if you move away from the, if you away, move away from the circuit breaker box and sleep in a bed canopy, you're, you're basically good. You know, if you do have control over your house, you know, if you're not in an apartment, if you're not living with family, if you have more control over what you can turn on and off, that's where you can start really turning off all devices and making sure you're basically in a, a really low Wi-Fi environment. But this ties back to like most people don't have to correct these things to, to fix the problem. But again, some of these more extreme things we mentioned are necessary for optimal, optimal health. And when you do them, even if you don't think you need to, you will feel better. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I mean, like I, I tell all my clients also get, get the PBX, try it. Like they can, in fact, I don't know if I sent you, I got to send you a link because there's a special offer where you can get, you can try it for less than $15. And a lot of people will feel an impact. You know, normally it should take a long time, you know, for us to get the toxins out, but we're all toxic, you know, we're all toxic, you know, and um, there's so many things that we can do. And it doesn't have to cost a million dollars for us to clean up or at least to aid our body, you know, and at least reduce the impact of the EMF. Yeah. Somewhat. If you, if you haven't been like, grass-fed carnivore for a couple of years, you would definitely benefit from the, the toxin removers. Um, for, for me, I was in a very unique isolated scenario where my candida overgrowth is being caused by an iron overload. Whereas like the average person might have dozens of different toxins and metals overloading their liver. For me, mm-hmm. I was basically clean because I'm eating organic grass and meat all day. I'm not eating anything right. else for years and years and years. So my body basically removed all toxins, but it made up for it with an excess amount of iron. iron. So, you know, that's an interesting point because, you know, that'll happen with copper too. We have to be real. And, and uh, there's a risk. In fact, like it's really kind of trendy to supplement with zinc. Very bad. You know, I, anytime yeah. someone tells me they're supplementing zinc, I say, don't do it. Yeah. You know, you know, like you should eat oysters because they have copper because the zinc copper balance is really tricky in the body. And if we take just zinc, it can cause copper ions to start freely floating in the body. So yeah. The issue with the so carnivore like said, diet is it's too high in zinc and people become copper deficient. I, Average, yeah. Yeah. So standard, Ameri- standard American diet, people are deficient and usually both. Right. Right. Yeah. So look, man, right. Life is complicated. The human body is a complicated thing, but if we just follow a good diet, you know, and, and these things too, like these are coming from the earth, right? So like when I'm talking about the zeolite and the clay and even the folic acid, they're natural things. They're things that the earth is giving us things that animals seek out. So again, we're not, uh, we're not relying on the pharmaceutical companies. We're not even talking about going crazy with plant medicine. Sometimes you do, I actually, I actually do like berberine uh, because it helps in a lot of different ways, but again, these things should not be used, uh, you know, long-term forever. Yeah. There's just a lot of ridiculous stuff. Like, you know, pow tea. Uh, it's, Oh, that's very good stuff. Yeah. Actually the teas I really like, 
I'm glad you mentioned that. I forgot to talk about that. Teas are so good because there's so many excellent teas. There's uh, the main Candida ones, I think, are Pau Diarco, Uva Ursi, and Olive Leaf. Now, Pau Diarco is, to me, the best tasting one. Um, and it, I'm assuming it's the least stressful on the liver. Um, Uva Ursi doesn't taste that great, but it's not. Um, it's okay. Uh, olive Leaf is very bitter astringent. I'm assuming it's pretty it's stressful potent. on the liver. Yeah, right it's potent, yeah. right? So, right. So, I was going to say exactly what you're you're actually alluding to is that you get a lot of these teas are really good because you just again you just incorporate them into your life, right? They, a lot of them are really good for hydration, and instead of just drinking water, and they have additional benefits. So you're not like just trying to kill something. They have many benefits. It's so it's also a reason why I like berberine. Like a lot of people say, like sell berberine as like a candida killer, but I don't view it that way at all. I don't see it that way. So I don't, so I, I don't mind berberine. I think berberine can help a lot of people that are, you know, struggling with their blood sugar balance, et cetera. Um, so yeah, so a lot of those things, I'm glad you mentioned the tea because there's so many good teas. Yeah, I wonder if you can infuse, uh, I wonder if you can infuse water kefir with Pau Diarco. I wonder if that would kill some of the bacteria in the kefir. That'd be interesting. But, uh, oh, that is interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, I think the con uh, the teas can be used as a more mild antimicrobial. Um, yeah, yeah, like and use that right. So you just use them, like I said, as part of your normal routine because it's additional hydration. Yeah. So we and we don't need to mix it, right? So I used to use them as it. the. Um, I used to use them to drink the to take all the antimicrobial pills. So what I would oh, do okay, is I would, I would take I would take my oregano oil, my capriac acid, unicellinic acid, berberine, the dozen things I was taking that were destroying my liver, and I would slug it down mm -hmm. with a very concentrated Pau Diarco tea, oh, so wow. that so that it would basically Ooh. all of the you know it was, that's if, if you want to bomb out your stomach, hit me up because I know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> right, it, it is right. basically like right, all right. of those capsules and oils and very like astringent, toxic, like. Right. Um, caustic, very burning, right. um, right. oils would basically burst with the Pau Diarco and anything there, it would be go through. Right. Um, no, there, so you're, just... you're not encouraging people to do no, this. Stuff. No, so no. So just, but, uh, just to yeah. be clear No, no. <laughs> but there's also this guy, um, I, I don't, I don't want to say the name of it, the product, but, um, it was, it's used as a pool cleaner. And if you take oh it God. with ascorbic acid, it completely flushes out your digestive system. Um, it was a type of sulfur, actually. Uh, but uh, so, uh, something less crazy than that would be like a sea, a sea salt flush, um, like a salt water flush. Right. Um, there's a lot of different things that and crazy stuff that people have tried. Right. But we want you guys to understand that we've researched this stuff. The crazier mm. person in here has tried it. And we're telling <laughs> you to stick with the diet and the kefir, not to do anything yeah, yeah. that's going to potentially damage your body. Right, 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 exactly. I mean, it's exciting to talking about bomb, you know, talk about bomb and stuff. But um, <laughs> yeah, in the long run, because in the long run, we want to actually adjust our, to a healthier lifestyle, and so these other tools, yeah, they'll make it happen. Just find those good food sources. Uh, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about fulvic acid because I've never really done a mm. video on fulvic acid and. Um, well, there's a well, lot of, um, like shilajit nonsense going on. <laughs> yes. So, you know, that's, it, that's a very good way to start it off too. You know, I had not talked about folic acid a lot because it was very hard to find a product that I could trust. So the, the quality varies dramatically. So I actually only recommend what you, you, you flew to the Himalayas and, and got the gorilla poop for us? No, no, not myself. No, but actually, so I use something called Boo Fulvic Acid. It comes from Canada and it's, it's a pretty cool story behind it. And it's like triple the amount of fulvic acid of other products. Like it, this is a really tricky thing because fulvic acid products don't have a lot of fulvic acid. Tell people what fulvic acid is first. So it's a very small molecule. So you've got humic acid and fulvic acid are these really good, they're organic compounds, right? So they're basically, it's like, um, you know, somewhere in the earth where a bunch of organic things died, plants and animals, and they've been decomposed. And so the organic matter is decomposing, decomposing. And if you go a really long time, like you mentioned Shilajit, 
you're getting to the point where this stuff becomes fossilized. And so there is folic acid in shilajit and with a lot of good minerals, but it's in this fossilized form at this point. I actually do like shilajit, but again, quality is a really big issue. Yeah, I mean, I'm not drinking black tar, buddy. So yeah, yeah, right. It's a really, <laughs> and it's a, it's a really. Shilajit looks like black tar. Yeah, 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 it does. It really does. So before you get to that point, right, you've got humic acid and folic acid, which is still like alive. What is humus? The word for soil, right? Humus. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere. So you're getting that right. So actually, like, it'll be like, you go to like a peat bog, like where they get the full of gases from a peat bog, or it's very similar. It's all this idea. You've got all these different things as organic matter is decomposing in the we earth. We're telling people naturally. to eat dirt from a bog and I'll ask you on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. But, but of course, you know, they, they go through and they, they, it goes through some processing, but you're still getting basically this organic matter and so it's a it's another really good we could say it's a great electrolyte because there's like over 70 different minerals in it but the key thing for me like i i actually don't care about those minerals because in our good diet we got kefir and other stuff we got minerals right but the fulvic acid and the humic acid is really good too but fulvic acid is even better it's smaller it's like a tiny version of humic acid and it can go everywhere in the body. And so it does several things. It's, it's a great carrier. So it will help deliver minerals throughout the body. And it's great at also oxygenating. It'll bring oxygen to the cells. So it'll give you energy. It has, a, it has a lot in common with MSM, even though they're totally different molecules, a lot of similar benefits. It's like MSM is feeding you sulfur, folic acid will feed you other things because it'll actually carry minerals and it will detox. So it will also grab heavy metals. It's not as good as, as the PBX zeolites because it's actually doing some chelation. Yeah, we, we need to do it. We should do a it's, whole it's, it's pretty podcast complex. on each of these. Yeah. 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 It's pretty complex, but it's, it's really good. So like I, I've got clients that use all of these things together and the folic acid you can use as a foot bath, a face mask, but quality again is really important so one thing i'd like to contrast like when we talk about the clay like good clay is everywhere you still want to be careful you know you don't you want to be careful but you can basically get good clay anywhere you really don't have to worry so much about brands but when it comes to the fulvic acid and the zeolite the pbx and pb i, I will only work with the one brand <laughs> i'm laughing so much I'm, I'm trash laughing this uh, this girl on Instagram sent me a like a DM of her eating clay from her backyard once. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I yeah, I you know I don't mind that. I you know I'm still a little worried because our environments are so toxic and unnatural, right? I don't I don't know how pristine her backyard yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, you know, an elephant in Africa eating clay is different from us going into our backyard. So, yeah, so we do want to be a little careful. So, you know, I'll, uh, I do like to use brands that I feel comfortable with, but there's just with clay, there is, a, there's a lot of good stuff. So, uh, I guess um, we didn't talk about like people start freaking out when they see candida in their bowel movement, which kind of looks like string cheese. Oh, right. But that's a good thing. I always tell when people freak out, Hey, congratulations, it's coming out. Well, uh, assuming that you started doing things to help, help it come out. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you know, but, just, but yeah, if you yeah. if if you do take the probiotics and the water kefir, the the lactobacillus and the the beneficial bacteria is just going to eat it, so you should have a regular bowel movement eventually. Well, yeah, but you can still like because when you start to really kill off candida, um, it, it can just start falling out. Yeah, but it, it should be a temporary thing. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Oh like, yeah, yeah, right. It's not forever. So that's why I say it's a good sign. You're winning the battle. Mm -hmm. You know, you're winning the battle. It's a good sign. It starts coming out. So you don't have to panic. There's another interesting thing, you know, when, um, especially with milk kefir, when people do milk kefir or any dairy, right? Dairy increases your body's ability to produce mucus. And now mucus is another fantastic tool that the body uses. If the body can produce enough mucus, it's going to use mucus to flush out toxins, right? So you'll get more mucus flow if you can produce it. So like, cause some people panic, oh my God, you know, I'm getting a lot of mucus out and I'll say, congratulations. You know, sometimes it's an indicator that, you know, something wrong is going on because you ate something bad. But again, if you're able to produce the mucus and you were toxic, then that's good. 
you're starting to get it out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I don't worry when I see stuff coming out. Yeah. I think, I think we've touched on basically everything we need to on Candida. I mean, the basic protocol is mm. start cleaning up your diet, definitely get some Wi-Fi mm -hmm. protection clothing. And the, the more difficult part, I guess, is getting a good, good probiotic because usually you have to make it yourself. Uh, we are selling the water key for uh, already made on, on Frankie's range foods. Now, if you guys do want to try that out, um, if you, if you have a local farm nearby that makes it, that's great too, but uh, it can be, it can be a little difficult mm. for most people to get their hands on a, a good probiotic that actually has the correct strains without having to make it themselves. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Kefir. Well, I mean, kefir is the easy win, right? It's more potent than anything you can buy in a bottle of pills, you know? Mm. So, I mean, that's really, and other fermented foods people to, and even, you know, complementing that with, if you can get your hands on a good yogurt, you know, but yeah, if you can make kefir a top priority, we don't have to talk about stress, but of course it goes without saying people need to reduce their stress, but healthy eating should help you to reduce your stress too. So reducing the Wi-Fi EMF, especially to the brain is yeah, also a big one. Right. All those things. Right? I mean, it's all connected, right? It's all, it's, you got, we got to take a holistic perspective. It's all connected. Uh, yeah. I think, I think we've touched on everything you need to know about candida and, and then the specifics like specific supplement protocols, specific antimicrobial protocols. That's where you can reach out to myself or Victor um, if you want to. Victor, if you want to actually reasonable approach me, if you want to <laughs> start <laughs> blasting stuff and doing crazy stuff. No, but um, uh, Victor, did you have anything else to, uh, to mention? To no, that's about it. I would say, um, you know, when you look at some of these things, they're, they might look expensive, but there are ways to get some deals. I'll make sure you've got the links for them if anybody wants to try um, the PBX. Yeah. PBX I'll, I'll just, I'll just link thing. your, your, I'll link your stuff in the description. They can go. And I think All you right. have it linked there, right? Um, yeah. So you I have guess. everything on there. Yep. Well, thank you guys for joining us for the podcast this Sunday. Uh, as I just mentioned, we're going to have Victor's information as well as mine linked in the comments below. You can go to his or my website to see our various businesses or to reach out to us. Um, outside of that, if you guys could please drop a like on the video, especially Leave a comment down below if you have any questions or if we missed anything, as well as subscribing and checking that notification bell. Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you for the next podcast. Thank you.